Hello friends! Today we are gonna create a blog application using React, Node.js and MySQL. On the home page, we are gonna fetch all posts from our MySQL DB. When we click, it's gonna get a single post, but we are not gonna fetch only post details, we will also fetch the user information. So you are gonna learn how to join different tables in MySQL. By the way, we can log in or register. As you can see, we cannot edit or delete this post because we are not the owner. But if I open a different post that belongs to me, you will see that there are two buttons. So I can delete this post or I can edit. Let's update our post. And here we are using a rich text editor so we can give any style to our text. I can upload an image, change here and update. As you can see the post has been updated and every file that we upload is being stored on our server. And there is a sidebar here and it recommends only similar posts. I can create a new post, I can log out and many other functionalities. It's a great project to understand React and MySQL basics. You will learn database relationships, user authentication, JSON Web Token to provide the security, cookies to hide sensitive information, advanced CSS tips and more. I hope you will like it. If you want to see more projects like this, you can like the video. If you are ready, let's get started. Ok, let's open an empty folder and inside create two folders. First one will be our backend server. So I will say API and the second folder will be our React application. So I will say client site. Let's create our React app. To do that, we are going to be using LamaDev GitHub repository. If you open up this repository, you are going to see that there is a React mini branch here and we are going to install this branch. We are doing this that because I don't want to clear all those unnecessary files. To save a little bit time, we are going to be using this repository. So I'm going to come here and copy this URL. So I'm going to open up client folder. And I will say git clone. We are going to be using only one branch. And branch name will be react mini. I'm going to paste my link. And I'm going to install everything in this client folder. So I will say dot and enter. As you can see, they are here, but we don't have our libraries. I will just say yarn, or if you are using npm, you can say npm install. And it's going to install our libraries. Okay, it's ready. I will say yarn start. And it's here. We have only this text here, we have only app.js and we don't have to delete any unnecessary file. Ok, so what I'm gonna do? I want to create our pages first. We are gonna need a login page, a register page, a home page and to create any post or update any post, we are gonna create another page. Finally, to show a single post, we are gonna have a single page. Let's create them. I'm gonna come here, pages folder and inside Let's say login, another one, our home page, I will say write, and finally a single post page, like that. Let's create our functions quickly. Okay. But how we are gonna reach those pages? It should be our home page and when we change the URL, we should see other pages according to this URL. To do that, we are gonna be using React Router DOM. It allows us to navigate between our pages. It's really easy to use. Let's come here. As you can see, we have to install this library. I'm gonna open up new terminal and yarn at React Router DOM. And after that, as you can see, this is how we can create our router. We can give any path here and we can provide any page here. You are going to understand better right now. 
By the way, this is the latest version of the React Radarton. If you are using the previous one, you are probably not familiar with this structure, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain. Let's copy this components. I'm gonna close everything and open up my app.js and I will import here. Let me show you this. Okay, as you can see, we are gonna create our router and using this router provider, we are going to pass our router here. Router equals our router that we have created here. And it says if you visit the home page right here, for example, home. Let's say this is home. Let's check. As you can see, this is home. If I create any other path here, let's say test, this is test. And if I go to localhost and test, as you can see, it's here. Basically, it works like that. So what we are going to need, we are going to need a register page. And when we visit this page, I'm going to call the register page. Let's import, I will say, register pages and register page. So I can do the same thing for login page. Actually, let's import others. A single page. Okay. Let's see. By the way, by default, React Router DOM shows this error when you visit non existing page. As you can see, we don't have any test anymore. And of course, you can customize this page, but we don't need that. Let's test our login page. Okay, perfect. It's here. Of course, I can do the same thing for right, home page, and single page. But there is something that we need to consider. For the register and the login page, we don't need any navbar or footer. But for the home page, for the right page, and for the single page, we are going to show here a navbar and a footer. Basically, they are going to be our common components. Let's create here. And I will say footer. and never okay so instead of coming here and writing nowhere and after show here the home page and finally show footer of course we can do this let's go to home page as you can see they are here but it's not a good idea for this application, it's not a big deal that because we have only three pages, but imagine you have tons of pages and writing them one by one is basically it's a wasting time. Instead, what we are going to do is to use React Router DOM outlet. Let's search for it. Okay, it's here. As you can see, it allows us to render child element with the parent. Basically, we can create here a component and we can say use here navbar, right here outlet, basically it's going to be our children, it can be any component, and after that, right here footer. Let me show you, and you will understand better. I'm going to come here and create a function. I'll say const, let's say layout, and I'm going to return my navbar, and I'm going to write here outlet, and footer. I'm writing here React Fragments that because we cannot use multiple components like that without any parent. And I'm gonna use this layout here. To do that, I will say elements will be my layout component. And I'm gonna write here children. It's gonna be an array. And we are gonna provide here our child pages. First one will be home page. So I'm gonna say path is gonna be the main URL. And the element will be home page. I'm going to duplicate this and I will say single page and it's going to be single page. And finally, write and write. I'm going to come here, as you can see, our home page. Oops, there's something wrong. Of course, I've created this layout here. It should be before our router here. Let's see again. 
Okay, perfect. It's here. Let's visit right. Okay, it's here. And single page. Okay. By the way, let's make this post page and we are going to write here a specific post ID. So basically I will say column ID. So if I say post and an ID here, it's going to show this page. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is to give here a class name. It's going to be app and inside one more div uh, class name will be container. I'm doing this that because I'm going to give a specific width for this container. It's going to be in the center of the our app div. So I'm going to wrap this router provider and that's all. But how we are going to give our styles? Of course, you can create individual CSS files for each component and each page, but I'm not going to do this. I'm going to create only one CSS file and I'm going to write everything inside. That's because it's a really simple application. We don't have many components and pages. And actually, I don't want to spend that much time for styling. So I'm going to come here and create a style file. But I want to use SAS. So I'm going to open up my terminal again and I will say garn add SAS. And I will come here, create new file, and I will say style.scss. And as I said, you can separate your style files. It's not that important. So I'm going to come here and say app. And inside our app, we have a container. And inside this container, firstly, we are going to have a login page and register page. Let's say login and register. They are going to have common elements. Let's open up login page. I'm going to give here a common name. Let's say authentication, for example. And inside, I'm going to create h1 tag and I will say login. And let's create a form. And it's going to include two inputs. First one will be username. And second one will be password. Type will be password. And finally, I'm going to create a button. And let's say login. Let's open up our login page. Okay, firstly, I'm going to center everything. To do that, I'm going to be using Flexbox. I'll say auth. It's our container, remember. I'll say display flex, align item center, and justify content center. And nothing happened, that because we didn't import our CSS file here. I'll say import style.scss. Okay, it's centered horizontally, but it's not centered vertically. That because we don't have any height here. If I say background color, as you can see, it hides ending here. To prevent this, I will say height 100 vh. So it's going to be full height. And I want to give here a background color. Actually, it's going to be a common color. So I'm going to create here a variable. Let's say light green. And it's going to be this color. So I can use this variable anywhere in my app. So I will say background color and light green. Like that. But I don't want to make them horizontal. The login title should be here. So I will say flex direction. Not row. It's going to be column. Like that. Let's take care of this h1. Font size will be 20 pixels. I will say color will be teal and I'm going to give some margin between this title and this form. Okay, what about this form? Again, it's going to be vertical, so I will say display flex, flex direction, column. And I want to give some padding inside. Of course, we cannot see that because we don't have any background. Let's say white, like that, but it's really small. Let's say 200 pixels. I want to give some space between my elements. So I will say gap 20. Like that. Let's take care of those inputs. Inside form. Padding will be 10. I'm going to delete those borders. And I'm going to give border for only bottom. One pixel, solid and gray. Like that. 
actually let's increase this padding here it's still too small okay it's better and what about this button again inside form i will say button padding tan border non and background color will be teal font color will be white and cursor will be pointer like that okay so I can create here a link. If you don't have any account, we can go to register page. So I'll say span. Don't you have an account? And I'm gonna create here React Router Don link. And I'll say register. And we are gonna go to register page. Like that let's give some style here it's going to be a little bit smaller and i will say text align center like that by the way if there's an error here we can show it i will say p this is an error of course we are going to change this error message according to our error i will say p tag again small and font color will be red text align center again okay so i will do the same thing for the register page so basically i'm gonna copy here and paste for register page and i'm gonna change my login text here it's gonna be register and do you have an account if you have go to login page like that and one more input we are going to need and it's going to be email and they are going to be required okay it's that easy let's open up our home page and let's create our navbar and footer i'm going to open up navbar and let's say class name, navbar. And inside this navbar, firstly, we are gonna have a logo here. And in the end of the screen, we are gonna have our categories and some links. Let's do that. Firstly, I'm gonna create a container that because I'm gonna give some padding. And uh, firstly, we are gonna have a logo. And other side will be our links, like that. Logo, links okay let's make this horizontal i'm gonna open up style actually let's open this here i'm gonna close everything and okay i'm gonna come here and say never you have a container inside and logo and links let's give here a padding i will say padding 10 pixels from top and bottom zero pixels from left and right and i'm gonna make this horizontal okay but as you can see it starts from here as i said i'm gonna give some specific width for this container i will say width it's gonna be 10 24 and of course i'm gonna center this container so i will say display flex justify content center like that as you can see it starts from here and and somewhere here so what i want to do is to separate this logo and this link we are already using display flex so if i say justify content space between as you can see they are separated so let's create our logo to do that i'm gonna come here and create a folder images and i'm gonna move my images here and uh, we are going to be using this logo inside this div i'm going to say image and it's going to be our logo let's import image folder logo.png i'm going to use it here like that so what about our links i'm going to come here and create react router dom link 
let's import like that of course it should be like this because i'm gonna write my category name like this and as you realize there is a default style here to prevent this i'm gonna give here a class name and let's say link we are gonna be using this class name everywhere so i can use it somewhere here let's say link i will say text decoration no we are gonna delete this underline and color will be inherit so it's not gonna give any default style or color okay actually i can write here h6 and when we click on this link we are gonna go to home page but we are gonna write here a query and category will be art let's see i'm gonna click as you can see it's here but it's still home page let's create others actually i will just copy paste it's exactly the same thing i don't want to write the same thing again and again like that and of course it's going to be horizontal display flags and gap between our items like this of course we are going to increase the size but before i want to create something else here after this link i'm gonna say span and john basically it's gonna be our username and one more span it's gonna be logout and one more span and we are gonna create here a link again and i will say right when we click on this link we are gonna go to right page let's give different class name here it's gonna be a little bit different okay Firstly, I'm going to decrease this image size. I'm going to come here, logo, image, and it will be 120 pixels, like this. Let's center those items. Display flex, align item center, like that. I can do the same thing for this flex box also. Remember, it's flex box here, and align item center. And they are centered. Let's give style for this H6 tag inside link font size will be a little bit bigger font weight will be 300 like that what about this span it's going to be just cursor pointer so we can click here and finally this right as you can see we have a style here that because i forgot giving my class name it's going to be link and i'm going to write it here firstly i will give background color it's going to be our variable here light green like that i want to give some width height and i want to make this background circle let's say 50 pixels if i say border radius uh, 50 percent it's going to be a circle like that let's enter this text you already know how to do this display flex align item center justify content center like this i will change this font weight it's gonna be lighter and let's see how we can give a hover effect when i hover over i'm gonna change its style to do that i will say hover like that and text color will be teal background color will be white like that maybe border here so we can see our circle okay but as you can see there is a problem here when i hover over all those elements are moving that because we are adding here two more pixels because of this border to prevent this you can say 46 pixels hide 46 pixels that because we are adding two more pixels here or if you don't want to calculate anything you can give here a border like we did here but this time it's gonna be just right we are not gonna see it like this it's that easy so let's take care about this footer quickly it's gonna be a footer tag again i'm gonna add here my image my logo and a simple text here 
I will just copy paste. Let's import our image. Like that. I know for some of you this text is a little bit cringe, but <laughs> I just wanted to do this because it's really popular. Maybe some of you really like this kind of texts. So it will stay like that. After this, I will say footer. Footer tag. Firstly, I'm gonna take care of this image. Let's say 50 pixels, like that. And what about this container? Firstly, let's give here a huge space between this footer and this element, whatever, home page, single page, or right page. And after that, some padding. I will give background color. It's gonna be our green color. I will say display flags, align item center, and justify content space between. I'm gonna decrease font size. Like that. It's that simple. What about this home page? I'm gonna open home page here. Let's say class name, home. And here we are gonna add some posts. Of course, we are gonna fetch our posts from our API, but for now, I will just paste here a dummy data. As you can see, we have posts, ID, title, description, and image. We are gonna use them just for checking how our design is. Let's say posts. It's gonna be our posts container. And inside, I will say posts. And for each post, I'm gonna return a post div. And if you are using map, of course, you should give here a unique key and it's going to be post.id. That because all IDs are different, we can use it. And inside this div, we are going to have image container. It's going to include our image, post.image, and we are going to have content. And it's going to include this title and description. Let's say link. I'm going to create here h1 tag. It's going to be post title. And when we click on this button, we are going to go to post page. But as you remember, we have to specify our post ID. So I will say post page and here our post ID. Like that. And finally, a p tag and it's going to be post description. And finally, a button. Read more. Okay, it's really big. And this p tag inside our link, I think. And our button, it should be here. And let's give here our class name. Okay, perfect. And that's all, I think. After this footer, I will say home page. And inside this home page, we have posts. Firstly, I'm going to give a margin between this and this navbar, and I will say display flex, flex direction column, and gap between each item, each post, will be 150 pixels, like this. And for each post, I will say display flex, they are going to be horizontal, like that. Let's decrease this image size, I will say image. Be careful here, it's a class name, that because we have a container here. I will say flex1, and for the content div, I will say flex2, oops, like that. Of course, it's still the same, that because we didn't give any height or width for our image, I will just say width 100%. So its width will be its parent here, like that. As you realize, our content size is 2 units and image size is 1 unit. You can change here and make whatever you want. You can say image size 2 units and content size 3 units. Like that. Right now, image is bigger. Actually, it looks better than other, I think. So it can stay like that. I want to give space here. Cap 100 pixels like that let's give height for this image it's too big i will say maximum height is going to be 400 pixels of course i will say object fit and cover so it's going to crop our image properly okay awesome
but I want to make here something different. We have four elements here, and I will say if the item number is odd number, put this image here on the right and content on the left. And if the item number is an even number, just leave it like that. Image on the left, content on the right. To do that, I will come here and say and child. And I'm gonna write here a condition. If it's 2n plus 1, which means if it's an odd number. And I will say flex direction. Again, it's gonna be row, but this time it's gonna be row reverse. Like that. It's that easy. As you can see, first element, third element, it's that easy. Let me show you one more effect here. Basically, we are gonna create another cut like this image but we are gonna give only background color to do that i will come here and i will say after and we should give here a content and basically you can write here any text and it's gonna add this text after this image but i don't want to add any text instead i will just create a div and its size will be exactly the same size with this image but instead of an image I'm gonna just give a background color. Let's say with 100%, height 100%, and background color will be our light green. And I'm gonna give some position for this cut. Basically, its initial point will be this point. To do that, I have to come here and say position relative. And for this one, I will say position absolute. And I can give any position here. Let's say top 20 pixels, and left will be minus 20 pixels and as you can see 20 pixels from top and minus 20 pixels from left if i don't write this relative as you can see it contains all screen that because its parent is our app container instead of this image this is why we are writing here relative but there's a problem here this div should be under this image it's really easy to handle that i will just give set index and it's gonna be let's say minus one as you can see it's much better of course it's not only way to do this you can basically create here another div and you can do exactly the same thing but i just wanted to show you how you can use after here so i will delete this and what about this content i will say display flags flex direction will be column and justify content will be space between basically i'm gonna separate them like that of course it looks strange for now let's change our h1 tag like this and p tag like that what about this button it will be maximum content Let's give some padding, delete this border, and give some color. It's gonna be 10 to 20, border will be none. Of course, cursor pointer. I wanna give background color, it's gonna be white. And I will give border. One pixel, solid, and our color. By the way, let's change this text color. It's gonna be T. Maybe this one too, because it's really light. Okay, it's much better. Let's use a hover effect again. I will say hover, border, one pixel, solid and white. You know why I'm doing this. It's exactly the same reason. And background color will be our light color. And color will be, let's say black like that perfect it's really simple but it looks really nice and minimal perfect let's take care about this single page i'm gonna click here as you can see this is our post number let's create our items by the way i can close them and open up single page let's say class name single page and we are gonna have two items First one will be our content, which includes post image, title, and description. And second item will be a menu here. Let's do that. I will say content and menu. 
C and M. That will say single page. Again, display flags, and I'm going to give a gap between them. And content will be flags 5. And menu will be flags 2. Like that. As you can see, it looks really nice. Our menu will start from here, and content will be here. Let's see what we can add here. Firstly, of course, we are going to have our image. I will just paste here any image. We are going to change this later. And after this image, before writing our post title, I just want to create here a user div. And it's going to include user image, username, and under this name, post date. Let's do that. I will just say user div, another image. And next to this image, I will say info div, and it's going to include username, John, and a p tag, and it's going to be posted two days ago. Okay, our images are really big. Let's come here. We have a user div, and inside there is an image with 50 pixels, height 50 pixels. It's going to be circle. and object fit okay and before this user div of course we have post image i will say with 100 percent height will be let's say 300 and object fit will be cover like this perfect let's make this div horizontal user display flags align item center and cap between them like that and i'm gonna decrease font size and uh, for span which is username font weight will be bold like that okay maybe i can add here something else if we are the owner of this post we will be able to delete or edit this post let's add our buttons so after this info div i'm gonna create one more div and it's gonna be, let's say, edit. We are gonna have two images. Let's import them. Edit.png. Delete.png. And it's gonna be here. And the second one. Like that. For this edit button, I'm gonna add a link. And when we click on this button, we are going to go to right page, but a query here, and it will be our post number. Of course, we don't have any post number for now. Let's say just two. We are going to change this later. And let's come here and create our edit div. I'm going to give five pixels space. And uh, for each image, it's going to be 20 pixels and uh, cursor pointer. Like that. Perfect. If I click here, we are going to right page. And when we click here, we are going to delete this post. Okay, let's take care about this title and description quickly. So user div here, and I will say h1 tag is going to be this text. And finally, p tag. I will just paste this text like that. I will say font size 42 pixels and color will be this dark color. Like that. And for this p tag, our description text align and it's going to be justify. As you can see, it ends in the same line. And it looks better. And I'm going to increase this line height. So I will say line height and 30 pixels. And as you can see, it's much better. And those elements are to close each other. Our content here, I will say display flex, flex direction column, and gap 30 pixels. And it's much better. Okay, what about this menu? Actually, let's create another component for this. I will say 
menu.jsx and I'm going to call this component here like that class name and inside I'm going to give a title other posts you may like and again we are going to have some posts I can use this one I will say posts map for each post return a post view and key will be post.id and inside post image post title and a button here that says read more let's add here post title and post image let's come here and I will say display flex is going to be vertical again and gap between each post will be 25 pixels for this title and for each post again vertical and between image title and button will be 10 pixels and let's write here our image and see how it looks I will say 100% height will be 200 and object width will be cover like this perfect let's change this color it's gonna be exactly the same color here h2 like that and this button actually I'm gonna use exactly the same button here so I will just paste like that only difference is this padding I think like that perfect and it looks really nice basically it's going to recommend some posts according to the category of this main post so if the category is design for example it's going to show only design posts okay perfect so finally writing page I will come here and say write and again it's going to be two pieces our content which includes our inputs and there will be two menu here first one will include our publish button and upload image button and second one includes our categories that we can choose let's do that I'm gonna open right let's give our class name quickly and inside again I will say content and menu and inside this menu we are going to have two items item one item two and content i will give some margin between navbar and this page it's going to be display flex and gap between this content and menu will be 20 pixels i will say content again flex 5 and menu will be flags too and I'm gonna separate those images display flags flags direction column and gap between them will be 20 pixels like that by the way there is something wrong here that because its class name is exactly the same name with our component let's change this it's gonna be add okay perfect so let's create our inputs inside this content I'll say input and placeholder will be title and we are going to have a text area for our description but I want to use here a rich text to do that we are going to be using this library and it allows us to add some spaces let's check here as you can see there are some spaces or we can make them bold for example we can increase font size we can give some links and it's going to be much more effective instead of writing a plain text here so let's import this library i'm going to open my terminal yarn add react quill and let's see as you can see we are going to have a use state here and whenever we change anything inside this editor it's going to change our value let's import them 
I will come here and import. And after title, I'm going to create my container. And I'm going to add this editor. Like that, of course. I shall create this state here, like that. And let's see how it works. I will say console log and value. I'm going to open my app. Right. And as you can see, it's here. And I'm going to write here something. And as you can see, it's here. And inside ptag. I can make only here bold, as you can see. Or underscore italic. Or I can give some space. As you can see, it adds automatically all those spaces. It works perfectly. So I'm going to delete this. And what about this menu? For the first menu, I will say h1 tag and publish. I'm going to create two span status. Let's say draft and one more visibility. It's going to be public. Of course, we are not going to create those functions, but maybe for the future, we can update our app. And what else? We are going to add here an input, and it's going to take care of our post image. We can choose here any image, but it doesn't look good. What I want to do is to add here a label, and HTML4 will be this input ID. Let's say file, and here file, oops. It already has here ID, I forgot, I didn't see it. And let's write here, upload file or image. So if I come here and say style display and none, as you can see, that button is not here anymore. But if I click on this text, it still opens my folder. Basically, this label represents our input. Okay. And after this, I'm gonna create buttons and it's going to include two button first one will be save as a draft and one more is going to be update like that and what about second one i will say h1 category and let's say input is going to be radio and name will be category our group name is category and value will be let's say art this is our first category here let's show this a little bit and i'm gonna give you here id is gonna be art again i'm giving id because we are gonna do exactly the same thing we are gonna give a label here and it's gonna represent this input and i will say art like that let's do the same thing for others like that okay let's take care of this site i will come back here inside content i will say display flags column and space between them and we have an input here i'm going to give some padding i'm going to change the border it's going to be one pixel solid and light gray like that but about this side, as you can see, its height is really small here. To prevent this, I will just come here and write editor container. And height will be 300 pixels. And I will say overflow screw this container. And if I give here a class name, let's say editor. And if I say height 100% and I'm gonna delete its border as you can see it ends here but we don't have any border here let's say border one pixel solid and light gray and perfect 
I want to give same border for those menu items. I will just copy this and I will say item and maybe some padding inside like that. What I want to do is to give same height for this first item and second item. We already said flex box. So if I come here and say flex one, their size will be the same. Okay, let's make those items vertical. You already know how we do this. And I will say justify content space between. So I'm going to separate those items like that. We are going to handle this input and this label. But before, I will just say font size 12 pixels. And color will be this color. Okay, what about h1 tag? Font size will be 20 pixels. And for this label, I will say text decoration underline. Actually, I shouldn't say label because they are label also. Let's come here and give different class name. And it's going to be file. And I will say cursor pointer. Like that. And for those buttons, button div is going to be horizontal and justify content will be space between. So they are going to be separated. What I want to do is to give different style for this button and for this button. How we can do this? You can basically give here different class names, but I want to show you how you can use first child and last child. I will say first child which is our first button. It's going to be cursor pointer. Color will be teal. Background color will be white. And border. One pixel, solid, and teal. And I want to give some padding. Three pixels and five pixels. And I will duplicate this. But this time it's going to be last child. Or you can use here add child. And you can say two which is second element it's exactly the same thing so background color will be teal font color will be white like that perfect let's take care of those categories actually i should come here and wrap each elements with category div like that And I will say category, display flags, align item center, and gap will be two pixels, and text color will be teal. Like that. As you can see, right now it looks pretty nice. And we can choose any category here. Okay, perfect. So we have login page, register page, write page any category here it's the home page at the same time and uh, we can see any individual post here if i missed something i'm gonna update but right now let's create our backend server to do that i will close everything here and this client site and i'm gonna open my terminal let's close here for now and open up api folder and i'm gonna initialize my node application I will say npm init dash y. As you can see, we have package JSON here. We are going to have index file. Let's create. And we are going to add some libraries right now. Firstly, we are going to need express server. npm install or yarn add express. We are going to be using MySQL and node mode. I will enter. I'm going to pass here a little bit faster. That because I've already explained in the previous video. 
If you didn't watch that video, I highly recommend you to watch it because I just recapped how to create an Express server and how to connect to a MySQL DB, how to create new schema, how to create new table, how to get update and delete items. If you watch that video, everything will be much easier. It's around 40 minutes, but if you skip the React design parts, it's gonna be just 20 minutes or something like that. So it's not that long. You can watch it and come back. So I will say start and we are gonna start our app using nodemon index.js and of course type will be es6 modules so we can import our libraries like that express from express let's create our app express function and app.listen i'm gonna listen this port number and when we connect to our db I'm just going to write here connected and if you remember we should use express json function here otherwise we won't be able to send any data to our db and that's all i think let's run our app i will say yeah start oops start and as you can see connected so let's create our mysql connection to do that i'm going to create here a new file let's say db of course you can create your connection here but i want to separate this connection that because we are going to use this everywhere when we create our root you are going to understand better so i will say import mysql from mysql i will say export cons db and mysql create connection and I'm gonna write my configuration. We are using local machine to run our MySQL DB. So host will be localhost. My user is root. As I said, all those informations in the previous video. Password will be my password, lamade123. And we are gonna create our DB. And it's gonna be block. Let's do that. I'm gonna come here and i'm gonna create a new schema and it's gonna be block i will apply it's successful and let's create our first table i will click here tables and create a table and first table will be user firstly we are gonna have an id it's gonna be primary key and i'm gonna also increment this number and it's gonna have username not null it cannot be null and email again but i want to increase this limit 255 and we are gonna have password again it cannot be null and what else it can have image for example like that and i'm gonna leave this empty what else we can need it's enough i think let's create i will apply let's see user select all rows and as you can see they are here of course we don't have any user yet so i'm gonna create second table and it's gonna be posts by the way it's gonna be users not user so i will say alter table and name will be users okay so i will come here it's gonna be id again primary key also increment and it's gonna have a title not null we are gonna have post description let's make this thousand for example not null and image image url by the way guys in my videos time to time i see this comment how we can upload our images to mongodb mysql db and the answer is we are not uploading any image or any file into database we are uploading into our server or any cloud server and we are taking the url and pasting inside this table row so it's gonna be string and what else we are gonna have a date then we create any post it's gonna have a date and one more thing we are gonna need here we are gonna have here a user id it's gonna be an integer so it's gonna be our foreign key i'm gonna come here it's gonna be uid 
reference table will be our users table and I'm gonna choose UID here and there are some options here basically we can choose the option that when we delete any user delete all posts of this user or if you want to you can just delete user and posts can stay I want to delete its posts also so I will say cascade let's apply okay it's ready let's choose our users and I'm gonna add a new user here let's say test I will apply okay let's create a post but remember user ID is one oops select rows it's gonna be one title description image it can be any date here and user ID will be one I will apply okay it's ready and what I want to do is to delete this user I will come here and delete row I will apply as you can see we don't have any user anymore and if I come here and refresh my posts as you can see it has been deleted it works like that okay after this quick recap let's create our roots I will come here and roots and firstly we are gonna have authentication root that we can log in and register and after that we are gonna have users root and posts if you remember from the previous lesson we can make api requests using app get and any endpoint here test and we were taking request response and we were sending any response to user let's say it works so if we go to localhost and api port number and endpoint which is test and as you can see it works so instead of writing all routes here we are going to separate them using this folder and when we try to reach our posts we are going to use this route so basically i will delete here and let's open for example this one I'm gonna import express and I will say const router and express router function and using this router we can make any request for example for the main URL we are gonna take request response and we are gonna send this is post and of course we should export our router here and I want to use this router inside my index page let's say import post roots and I will come here and I'm gonna say app.use and we are gonna write here any endpoint let's say API and posts and I'm gonna use my root here so basically if I go to localhost 8800 API posts and for the home page of these posts we are gonna see this message actually let's write here test so I'm gonna come here and say API posts and test and as you can see this is post it works like that but I don't want to write all those operations here I want to separate them also so I'm gonna create one more folder here and it's gonna be controllers auth post controller and user controller so basically we are gonna make all crude operations inside those controllers for example then we want to add any post I will say add post for example and we are going to take request response response.json from controller so instead of writing my operations here I'm just gonna call this function add post that's all of course it's gonna be 
Jazz. Okay. Let's try again. I will refresh, and as you can see from controller, it works. Basically, folder structure will be like that. Our roots and controllers, and uh, we are gonna manage them using index file. Let's do the same thing for others. Authentication roots, user and post. Let's write them here. Like that. Of course, there is an error because we don't have them yet. I'm going to come here and let's delete this. And I'm going to copy here and paste for others. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do. Firstly, I want to be able to register to our app. So let's come here and create our first suit. I will say router is going to be post method that because we are going to send our user information and endpoint will be register. And let's open up our controller. Export const register request response. And one more. And it's going to be login and also we will be able to log out we are going to make this operation in the backend server that because we are going to be using cookies and that's all i think so i will say register function login function and logout dot js don't forget this register login and logout They all are post methods. Okay, let's close everything here and open up our controller. What I'm gonna do? When we try to register, firstly, we are gonna check whether we have the user with the same email or username. Check existing user. To do that, let's create our first query. I will say const query select items from users table and my condition here email equals question mark or username equals question mark and let's create our query we are going to call our db let's import this import db from db okay i will say query and we are going to pass here our query and we are going to add here our values our email and username and how we are taking them remember we are using request body and email request body and name basically we should pass here whatever we sign with question mark and after that it's going to return us an error or data if there is no error it's going to return us our result and we are going to check if there is an error just return response json and this error if everything is okay it means we already have this user inside our db so we will not be allowed to create a new one so i will say if data dot length it means if there is a data return response we are going to send a status 409 if i remember correctly it means data is already exist so i will say json user already exist okay and if there is no user in our db we can create our user but there is one more thing we should consider and it's our password if user sends password as test we shouldn't write here test directly we shouldn't store this as a plain text so what we are going to do is to encrypt our password to do that, we are going to be using a library called bcrypt.js. Let's see. As you can see, this is how we can encrypt our password. We are passing what we are taking from user and it returns us a hashed password. Let's do that. I will say hash to password and create a user i will paste of course i will make them const and this is gonna be 
request body and password. Let's import bcrypt, by the way. Okay. Oops. Okay. I forgot again. This is JS. If you're importing your modules, don't forget this extension. It's really important. And after that, we are going to insert our user to our DB. Let's create another query. And it's going to be insert into our users table and what we are going to insert its username its email its password and values will be question mark let's say const values our username will be request buddy dot username it's going to be email but we are not going to use this password we are going to use is hash password let's call our db and query we are going to pass our query and our values and it's going to return us either an error or data if there's an error just return this if there is no error return response status it's going to be 200 which is successful and json and let's send our message it's going to be user has been created let's try we can try this using postman or I don't know let's create our register function quickly you don't need to waste time I'm gonna come here and what I want to do is to create my input here const inputs set inputs and we are going to be using use state hook and we are going to store our user information here username is going to be empty email and password at the beginning they are going to be empty but whenever we change our inputs here we are going to set our states again to do that let's create here a function const handle change and it's going to be our common function so I will say on change method and handle change and for other inputs I'm going to paste so how we are going to set our inputs I will say set inputs and remember the use state video it's a really important video guys if you didn't watch it you should definitely check it includes everything you need to know about use state hook and in this video I've showed how to set multiple inputs in one function so I will say previous and we are going to return everything inside our state but we are going to change event target and name and it's going to be event target and value of course we should give here input names so it's going to be username email and password let's see i'll say console log our inputs and i'm going to open my client site and yeah start let's close here and I'm gonna open up register page oops by the way something is wrong with this background we are gonna handle this later but for now let's see how it works as you can see it's empty for now I'm gonna change here and as you can see it's here perfect it works like that so we have our inputs and we are ready to send to our endpoint so I will come here and uh, for this register button I'm gonna create on click event and it's gonna be handle submit const handle submit I will say event prevent default otherwise when we click on this button it's gonna refresh our page to prevent this we are using this function and of course it's going to be an async function 
that because we are making an API request and to make this request, we are going to need one more library, CD client, and it's going to be Axios. It allows us to make our API requests. It's a really useful library. Probably you already know. So I will say const response await. We are going to await this operation. I will say Axios post method. And I'm going to write here my API URL. By the way, let's import this Axios. And I'm going to write here localhost 8800 authentication endpoint. But writing this long URL again and again is not a good idea. So I will come here inside package.json. And here I'm going to say proxy and my URL. Localhost, port number, API, and that's all. Of course, after doing this, you should restart your application. I'm going to shrink this again. And we have URL right now. I'm going to specify my endpoint. And it's going to be auth and register. Oops like that and i'm gonna pass my inputs of course you can use here try catch block and if there is an error let's show it here first and let's show our response i'm gonna open my console let me make this bigger and here and i'm gonna write let's say test test and test i'm gonna register and as you can see we have a data here and it says user has been created let's check our db i'm gonna refresh here and as you can see it's here and our password is not test it's this encrypted password perfect what if i try to register with the same username i will register and as you can see it returns us this error and inside response and data it says user already exists so we can use this data instead of console log i'm gonna create here error state set error at the beginning it's gonna be null and if there's an error it's gonna be error dot response dot data this path and after that i'm gonna write here a condition and i will say if there is an error show this error here i will register and as you can see it's here perfect and if everything is okay i want to be redirected to login page so I can delete this response and I'm gonna use React Router DOM use navigate hook. So I will say const navigate use navigate and I will say navigate to login page. Let's see test two. I will register and as you can see we are in the login page. Perfect. So I'm going to do the same thing for login page. I will copy here and open up my login page here. This time we are not going to need email. I will delete. I'm going to import use state, use navigate. And if there is an error, show it here. And on click event, handle submit. And quickly, let's give username and password name and on change methods here. It's going to be handle change. Let's import Axios and endpoint will be login this time. We are going to pass our inputs. It's exactly the same thing. And if everything is okay, we are going to be navigated to home page. And that's all. 
it's ready. Let's take care of our controller here. And again, firstly, we are going to check if our user exists or not. I will say const query select from users table where username equals question mark. I'm going to use db query and I'm going to pass here request body and username. Error data. If there is an error, we are going to return it and we are going to check one more thing. It's going to be if data dot length equals zero, it means we don't have any user with this username in our DB. So we are going to return another error. So I will say return response status 404 and we are going to say user not found. And after that, if there is no error and if our user exists, we are going to check our password. That because in our app again we are going to send here a plain text and we are going to compare this text with this password let's see how we can compare as you can see we are going to use this comparing function and we are going to pass our password here and we are going to compare this with the password in our db let's do that i will say const is password correct and it's going to be this function request body and password and this is going to be the password in our db if you remember we have a data here but by default it returns us an array not only our user object so we are going to use the first item of this array which is our user and its password and i'm going to write here my condition if our password is not correct, return another error, response status, let's say 400, and I'm going to say wrong username or password. Okay. And after that, if everything is okay, finally, we are going to be logged in, but we are not going to send our user information and store this in our local storage or something. If you watch my JWT video, you are going to understand why you should use JSON Web Token. It's really important that because after this authentication, we are going to try to update our posts or delete our posts. But before updating and deleting, our application has to be sure that that post belongs to us. We are not supposed to delete or update any other user's posts. To provide this security, we are going to be using JSON Web Token. I'm going to come here. I will say yarn add JSON web token. Let's start again. Let's import this. Import JWT from JSON web token. And let's create our token here. I will say const token equals JWT dot sign. And here we should send a user information that identifies us. What we have unique here. We have user ID. We can use it. So I'm going to send here ID and it's going to be user.id. Basically, we are going to store this token in our cookie here. And when we try to delete any post, our application is going to check our JSON web token. And since it includes our user ID, our application is going to say, OK, this token user ID is exactly the same ID in the post. We don't have any post, but when we add here, we are going to add our user ID. And if they match, it means we are the author of this post. So we are allowed to delete it. It works like that. Okay. And also, we should provide here any secret key. I will just say JWT key. Of course, you can generate a random secret key and you can store it in your EMV file. But for now, it can stay like that. And after that, let's return our user information and send this token as a cookie. So I will say response cookie. By the way, to use cookies, we are going to need one more library. So I will say yarn add cookie parser. 
I'm going to start my app again and I'm going to open index file and right here one more middleware and it's going to be cookie parser of course I should import this import cookie parser from cookie parser like that okay response cookie and cookie name will be access token now we are going to send our token here and for the extra security i'm going to say http only and it means any script in this browser and this application cannot reach this cookie directly we are going to use it when we make only api requests okay i will say status 200 and json will be our data but if we do that it's gonna send all information of our user including this password it's a hashed password but even if it's hashed we shouldn't send our password like that so what i'm gonna do is coming here and taking only specific information from our data so i'm gonna separate this password and other information and i'm gonna send only this information not password i hope everything is okay oops why there are commas here it's gonna be request by the username return let's try actually i will say test test i'm gonna log in okay user not found oh it's test two and as you can see we are in the home page and if we check our cookies you are gonna see that our access token is here and this hashed token includes our user id okay perfect but also we should store our user information into local storage that because we are gonna use it in our navbar or if we check any post here we are gonna check our user id to show those buttons and when we write any new post we are gonna use our user id so basically we are gonna need our user information in any component so we have to store this in a common place to do that you can use any state management tools like redux but we don't need it here i think because we are not changing our user state all the time we will just log in and log out it's better to use here react context api let's create here new folder is going to be context and auth context so i will say export const auth context i will say create context from react and after that we are going to create our context provider why we are doing this that because as i said we are going to need our user information in multiple components in this now bar in this right page in this post page so we are going to store our information in this context so if we create here a context provider and wrap our application with this provider we will be able to use our user state anywhere in our application so i will say export const auth context provider and we are going to pass here children it represents our components that we want to wrap with this context provider in our case it's going to be our app component and inside let's create a state i'll say const current user set current user and it's going to be use state hook and what i'm gonna do is to check my local storage first if there is a user inside this local storage we are gonna use it if there is no user it means we are not logged in so it's gonna be null to do that we are gonna use localhost.getItem but everything we store inside this local storage is a string but i want to transform this into an object to do this i'm gonna use json parse and local storage get item and item name will be user and if there is no user it's going to be null 
So instead of this API request in our login page, I will just cut this and create here a login function. Const login async function. We are going to take inputs like that. And it's going to return us a response like that. And after that, we are going to set our current user. And it's going to be response.data. Something is wrong here. I forgot this bracket. Okay. Let's import Axios. And one more function we can write. And it can be logout. We don't have any endpoint yet, but let's write it in advance. And our user will be null. Okay. So we have current user here, but how we can update this local storage each time we change this user? Basically, we can use use effect here. Use effect hook. And whenever we change current user, we are going to update our local storage. So I will say local storage set item and item name is user. And this time we are going to transform our object to string and current user like that. And finally, we are going to return our provider auth context dot provider like that. And we are going to pass here our children, which is going to be app.js. And we can pass any state here. We are going to pass our current user. We can pass here any function like login and logout. By the way, double curly brackets. It's a prop. So basically, we can use these functions and this state in everywhere in our app. Of course, we have to wrap our application. Auth context provider. I'm gonna wrap my app. Let's try. I will come here and say const. Let's try to get our current user. I will say use context and our auth context. Let's see, console log, current user. And as you can see, it's null. By the way, if you are wondering why it writes here double null, you can watch my use effect video. I explained how this strict mode works. And you can learn how to use use effect properly. But anyway, as you can see, it's null right now. I will say test, test2, I will login and if I go to login page again by the way it's still null of course we didn't call our login function here let's delay it here and I'm gonna say login function and we are going to pass our inputs remember in login function we are taking inputs and making this api request and of course it should be await i'm going to log in again test to test and this time we have this user perfect so using this current user we can update this now bar let's open up Never. And we are going to be using this context again. Let's import them. And we are going to call current user. And I will say instead of John, if there is current user, write its username like that perfect and we can write here a condition 
If there is a user, we can show this logout button. And when we click on this button, we can call logout function. And if there is no user, we can just write here a link. So I'm going to come here and say condition. If there is a current user, show this span. If there is no, write here a link. And class name link. And it's going to be login. And we are going to go to login page. Like that. So when we click on this logout button, we are going to call logout function. And it's going to make our current user null. And at the same time, we are going to be logged out in our backend server. Let's do that. I will just say response clear cookies. Sorry, cookie. And my cookie name is going to be access token. And I'm going to write here some configurations. It's going to be same site and none. And I will say secure true. And after that, let's say status 200 successful JSON user has been locked out. Okay, let's try. I will log out. As you can see, it's null. Let's check our cookie. And it's gone. Let's log in. And access token is here. And user is here. Perfect. It works properly. So we have finished our authentication. Let's take care of our posts. Let's close everything and open up our posts route. Let's use our router get method and we are going to fetch all posts and we are going to add here our controller function. But before let's create others, we are going to get a single post using its ID. We will be able to create a new post, delete a specific post using ID and update like that. Let's create our controllers. We have add post here. I will say get posts, get a single post, add post, delete post, and update post. Okay, let's call them here. Get all posts, single post, add post, delete, and update. Okay, I can close here and let's create our query here. Const query select all from posts. But there is one more thing we should consider and it's our categories. If you remember, when we click any category here, it shows us this query. And using this query, we can make any other API request. So basically, we are going to check if there is a category query here or not. If there is, we are going to fetch all posts that includes this category. By the way, we didn't create any category here. Let's alter table and I will say category and it can be null. I will apply. Okay. If you want to, you can create categories table. But we don't need here in our application. We can just write directly as a string. Okay. So how we can reach this category query? It's really easy. We can reach it using request, query, and the query name. Basically, query is everything after this question mark. And we can specify which query we want to take. And it's going to be this category. And I'll say if there is a category, select posts but right here a where condition and its category will be question mark and if there is no query just choose all posts without any condition let's write our db here we have to import 
db.js dot query and for this question mark we are gonna write request query dot category and error or data if error just return it response sent or response json doesn't matter and if everything is okay status will be 200 and we are gonna send this data let's use this i'm gonna go to home page and if you remember we were using this dummy data i will just comment this out and i'm gonna create post state i will say const posts set posts use state hook and empty array and i'm gonna use use effect and let's say const fetch data async function and let's say try catch block that will just console log this error if you want to you can create error use state and write it somewhere here and const response we are going to await our api request and get methods and the endpoint will be posts and after that if there's a response we are going to set our posts it's going to be response.data and finally we are going to fetch our data like that we are creating here a function that because by default we cannot create async function using use effect as you can see so you have to create a function and call it like that okay i will save and let's see i will go to home page by the way we can add here a link where is our logo here i'll say link and home page okay as you can see we don't have any data yet let's copy this image url and let's create a post here but we have to give a proper date here because it's not null i will just delete this for now that because it's hard to write by hand so let's create our first post first post hello this image url i'm gonna leave this date empty and user id will be four and category will be let's say art i will apply okay let's see i'm gonna refresh the page and it's not here let's see our error here Okay, it says there is no posts. Okay, the error is here. Oh, because of this extension again. Our app was crashed. And one more. There is no router update, of course. It's gonna be put method. There is nothing like update method. I'm sorry. Let's check. Okay, it's connected. Let's try again. I will refresh and it's here. Perfect, it works. So if I come here for science, we still see this post that because we didn't send our category. Let's see, home page, as you can see. But how we can reach this URL here? It's really easy. We are gonna be using React Router DOM, const location use location hook and let's see what we have we have a path name we are in the home page but we have a search property here and it includes our query so basically we are gonna send this search property so let's say actually category use location dot search and we are gonna use this category here let's use it like that category let's see right now as you can see it's empty 
but if I click on art, okay, it's still empty that because we didn't provide here our category. So it means whenever we change our category, it's going to fire this function again and again. Let's see right now, science is empty and art is disposed. Perfect. So what else we can do? When we click on this post, we should fetch this post and also those recommended posts. But there is something important here. We should also fetch this username, but it's not in our post table here. How we are going to do this? To do that, we are going to use MySQL features. Let's open up single page. Actually, we are going to do exactly the same thing. I will just copy here and paste here. And it's going to be post view state at the beginning, empty object. And instead of category, I will just say location like that. Use effect axios. Okay, it's going to be posts. But remember, we are sending our ID here, post ID. But how we are going to reach this ID? Of course, using use location hook, we have already seen it. We have a path name. Let's delete this. But this location shows post and its number. But we are going to need only this number. To reach this number, basically, we are going to use JavaScript split. I will say post ID, location, path name, and split method. We are going to split this text using this slash, but we have two slashes. It means we are going to have three items, this local host, this post, and this number. So we are going to take the third item. It means it's going to be index two. That because in array, it starts from zero, zero, one, and two. Okay, we have post ID right now. We can pass it here, post ID. And it should be our dependency, of course. And right now, instead of this image, it's going to be post.image. Let's give here a question mark. So if it's loading, it's not going to give us any error. I'm going to say post.username. Of course, as I said, we don't have any username here. But we are going to join this user table into post table. And we are going to show our username and it's going to be our post date but how we are going to show it like that two days ago one week ago basically we are going to use moment library let's come here yarn at moment let's import this and i will say moment and i'm going to pass here post.date and from now so it's going to show us the difference between this date and the current date. And what else? Of course, we should see those buttons only if we are the owner of this post. So we can use our current user here. I will say const current user use context auth context and I'm going to write here a condition. I will say if current user dot username equals post dot username show me this div and as you can see it's gone that because we don't have any post yet but when we show you are gonna see that our buttons are here okay and what else is gonna be post dot title description Post description, but if you remember, we are using a rich editor and it already has a p tag, so we don't have to use it here like that. And that's all I think. Let's come here and fetch our data. Let's give some space between them. So I'm gonna write my query and it's gonna be select. What I want to return here, I want to return username, post title, description, image, its category, and date. 
and I want to use here two different database. So I will say from users and I'm going to give here a shortcut. It's going to be you. It represents these users and I'm going to join here our posts and it's going to be P and I'm going to write here my condition. I will say on users.id equals p.userid and one more condition here post.id will be question mark basically we are going to find our post using this id which is one and after that we are going to look inside this post and using this user id we are going to find our user and we are going to take its username it works like that let's create our query db.query and we should pass here our post id and it's going to be request params.id what's this params basically this id in our url and after that as always if error and return response status 200 and JSON this data but we are fetching only single item as I said it returns an array so we are going to return only first item which is our post let's see I will refresh okay it's still same oh of course it's not JavaScript it's gonna be equal and by the way there will be a problem here that because we have image here but we have image in our users also so we have to specify which image we want to take so i will just write here posts.image and as you can see it's here at the same time we are able to see our buttons here u.image But since the, their names are same, I want to specify here different name as user image. So if I come here and say post dot user image, okay, like that, and perfect. It's null, so we can write here a condition. If there's a post.user image. Okay, awesome. So right now we can delete our post. So I will come here and on click and handle delete. Let's create this function. Const handle delete async function. I'm going to copy here and delete method and it's going to be posts and our post ID and after that we don't need response here we are going to be navigated to home page of course we are going to use use navigate hook let's create this I'm going to come here and delete my post but before as i said we have to check our json web token if we don't have any json web token here in our cookie it means we are not authenticated so we are not allowed to delete this post and also even if we have a token we have to check if this post belongs to us or not let's do that firstly i'm going to take my token request cookies and cookie name access token and i will say if there is no token return response status 401 and json not authenticated authenticated okay by the way for other errors we are not returning any status let's turn 500 okay and after that 
We are going to verify our JSON web token. If it's a valid token or not, I'm going to import JSON web token uh, using JWT and its verify function. We are going to send our token here and our secret key, remember JWT key, and it's going to return us an error or our data. Remember, when we log in, we are sending this user information, which is our user ID. So we are going to take this here, let's say user info, and let's write here error condition. If there is an error, response status, this time it's going to be 403, and it's going to say, okay, you have a token, but it's not valid. And if it's valid, finally, we are going to delete our post. To do that, I'm going to take my post ID first. It's going to be request params dot ID. And let's write our query. I will say delete from posts where ID equals question mark. But also user ID should be our ID which is inside this JSON web token. And it means if user ID is not our ID, we are not allowed to delete this post. So I will say db.query, I will pass it here, and I'm gonna send firstly this post ID, secondly our user ID, let's say post ID, and user info.id. Again, user info is this object, if I say user info.id, it's going to give our user ID here. And after that, error data. If there is an error, I will say response status 403. And I'm going to send a message. And I will say you can delete only your post. It doesn't block you. And finally, if everything is okay, JSON post has been deleted. I hope I didn't make any mistake. Let's try. I will refresh. I'm gonna delete. And we are here. Perfect. Let's create other post here. I will refresh first. Test user ID will be five, for example. Of course, it's going to give an error that because we don't have any user like that. Let's create five other user. Any number here doesn't matter. And right now, let's create. Okay. Okay, it's here. And as you can see, we cannot see those buttons. But even if we see, let's come here and open up those buttons. Single page. Okay, here. I'm going to comment this out for now. They are here. I will delete. As you can see, it's still here. By the way, it says there is no image. We didn't add any image. Okay. Let's take this back. And we are going to fetch those items. But as I said, it's going to recommend those posts according to our main post category. So basically, we are going to send here our category. So it's going to be post.category. Of course, we don't have yet. Let's say art again. And another one. For, and let's say food. And one more. Test three. And it's going to be art again. I will apply. So 
sorry, I forgot this. Okay. So its category is art right now. Let's click, as you can see, two items. So we should see all art posts here. So I'm going to go to menu here and I'm going to take this category. Let's comment this out. And we are going to do exactly the same thing. I will copy here and paste here. We don't need this use location. We already have our category here. Let's import them. Axios. And the category name will be this category. And as you can see, it's here. Perfect. Test and test three. If I come here, what was that foot? As you can see, only this item. Perfect. And let's take care of this right page. We are going to create a post. Let's close everything and open up right page. Okay, this is our description. We are going to need a title. And also, we will be able to add any image. So it's going to be image. Of course, we don't have yet. And one more is going to be our category. Of course, you can create only one inputs here and you can set them in one function, but let's create like that. I'm going to show you different methods. So I'm going to set my title. It's going to be event target and value. And for our file here, on change again, I'll say set file. Where is our file? Okay, I said image, let's say file or image, doesn't matter actually. And it's not going to be value here, it's going to be files. Of course, we are going to upload only one file, so it's going to be first file. And for those categories, actually we can create different component for these categories to prevent writing on change method again and again. But anyway, let's write it. Set category. It's not that important for now. We just focus on how to communicate with MySQL. And that's all I think. We have all our items right now. So let's create on submit method. By the way, it says update. It's going to be publish. And we are going to write here a condition. When we try to update any post, it's going to be update. But when we write a new post, it's going to be publish. We are going to write it later. Let's create here on click methods. Handle click or handle submit. Prevent default. It's going to be an async function. And firstly, we are going to upload our image. To do that, you can use Fire Storage, Cloudinary, or any other cloud service. But for this tutorial, let me show you how you can upload your files inside your server. I'm going to go to index file. And here, we are going to create one more route, and it's going to be upload. And to upload our files, we are going to be using Malter. Let's install this and let's see how we can use it. I will come here. Yarn add Malter. And start again. And let's import this like that. And let's see. As you can see, we can create any destination and basically it creates here a folder which is upload and it uploads all files inside that folder. We are going to make something different but let me show you how we can do this. I will come here and destination will be uploads folder and we are going to add here our endpoint. 
let's say upload and we are going to be using this upload here and it's going to be a single file and its name will be file which we are going to send here right now and after that it's going to take request response and return response status 200 image has been uploaded let's see let's create here upload image function upload is going to be async and try catch block and to upload any file firstly we should create here a form data so i will say const form data new form data and inside this data we are going to pass our file to do that we are going to use append method and it's going to be file and we are going to send our file here and this name is exactly the same name here so basically we are going to pass our file and after that let's make our request const response await axios post method is going to be upload by the way i forgot here api i have to write this that because in our proxy remember we are using this endpoint import axios from axios and let's see what we have response data and we are gonna call this function here of course we should pass here our form data let's see i'm gonna choose any image here and publish and there is an error here okay it says there is no folder like that it should be like this i think let's try again image has been uploaded and uploads as you can see our file is here but as you realize it doesn't include our extension it's not an image but if i change this to png for example as you can see it's here but how we are gonna add our image name to do that we are not gonna use destination instead we are gonna be using multi storage as you can see it allows us to give any specific name and instead of destination we are going to be using this storage let's do that i will copy here and paste like that and it's going to be storage and our storage actually they are same name so we can leave it like that as you can see it gives this strange name but we are not going to do this we are going to take file dot its original name but if we do that when we upload the same image with the same name it's gonna overwrite our image to prevent this it should be unique to do that we can use date dot now so it's gonna give us a unique name and what about our folder again we can make this uploads folder or even you can say go to client site public and upload so it's going to upload everything here and finally of course we are not going to send this message that because we are going to need our url image url so instead of this message we are going to send our file dot file name i will publish file is not defined of course we didn't take our file request.file by the way let's create our folder here let's see i'm gonna choose my image publish and as you can see this is our path and let's check and it's here perfect it's exactly the same name so we can add this url to our db okay so what I'm going to do is to take this title, description, and category and send them to our DB. I will come here and I'm going to say const 
image url equals upload of course it should return us our url like that and i will say try catch block so what i'm gonna do as i said we are able to write any new post and also and also when we try to edit any post we are gonna see this page also but with this edit query so using this query we can decide whether it's a new post page or updating post page basically if we are in the single page when we click on this button we can also send this post to our edit page how we can do this let's open up single page and as you remember we have a link here and also we can send any state here and this is going to be our post to reach this data we are going to come here and say const state use location hook and state and i can write here a condition if there is a state use its title if it's not it means it's a new post page so it's going to be an empty string so i can do the same thing for others or empty state dot category or empty i'm not writing anything here that because state dot image is a string but it should be fine okay let's see I will come here and say value is going to be title we already have here value and for those categories again it's a good idea to separate this component but anyway i just regret but i'm too lazy to change it so basically we are going to check our category and if it equals our category name it's going to be checked so let's change those names i'm gonna come here edit and as you can see it's here and it's category but if we try to write new post as you can see it's empty perfect so what i'm gonna do basically i'm gonna write here a condition I will say if there is a state it means it's an update page so we are going to call axios dot put method posts and i'm going to add here my post id which is state dot id i want to check something here single post okay we are not sending here post id let's send it post.id otherwise we won't be able to use this id okay and after that we are going to pass here our title description will be our value category and image will be if there is a file image url if there is no it's going to be an empty string and I'm gonna do the same thing for other condition. If there is no state, it's gonna be post method posts. We don't have to specify any ID here. Title, description, category, and image. And also we are gonna add here a date. We cannot directly use date.now that because in MySQL it should be a certain date. To do that again, we can use moment. I will say date.now and its format will be year month day of course inside code hour minute and second i couldn't import this okay and if everything is okay we are going to be navigated to home page but for now it can stay and we can check whether there is an error or not and let's come here and create new post Again, I'm going to check this token. 
if we are not logged in of course we cannot add any post if everything is okay i can create my query here and it's going to be insert into posts we are going to have title description image category date and uid and um, values will be question mark let's write our values we are going to be using request body and our items and also for our id we are going to be using our token if you remember it returns our user info which includes our user id let's run this query db dot query values error or data if there is an error we will send it if there is no return response json post has been created what about update post actually i will copy here and paste like that this time we are not going to need any date and i will say by the way i said inset it should be insert okay i'm too tired to continue i think after this i'm gonna take a break i will say update posts and we are gonna use here set key actually let's delete here and what we are gonna set our title description image and category let's write here our condition where we are gonna provide our post id and also uid and it allows us to verify our identity so we are gonna set those items update them and also we are gonna pass here our post id let's write here post, post id request params dot id like that and also user info dot id and post has been updated i hope everything is okay let's try i'm gonna write from react new test i'm gonna choose this image design i will publish let's see okay it's here but we don't have this image that because let's open home page as you realize we directly give our image property like that we should write here upload and post image sorry like that okay it's still not here that because it returned object oh i forgot here writing await let's try again last test i hope let's choose this cat picture art and publish let's see and it's here perfect by the way one more thing here as you can see it shows those p tags also to prevent this you can use dangerously set inner html but i recommend you to prevent this it can cause some security problems instead i'm going to create here a function const get text and we are going to pass here our html text we are going to take our documents new dom parser it's not that important you don't have to worry about this part i'm just showing you how to show these html texts without causing any security problems so i will say parse from string and we are going to pass here our html text and it's going to be text html and finally we are going to return document body and text content 
let's take this function and paste here and I'm gonna pass my HTML text like that as you can see perfect and I will click here we have exactly the same problem here that because we don't have our image path here I'm gonna say upload and this image perfect and for the, this menu okay we have only this image and what about here let's take this function and paste here our description like that okay perfect what about editing i will say updated updated test and it was art it's going to be science let's change this image i will publish let's see and as you can see it has changed perfect it works after those operations we can go to home page navigate and home page const navigate use navigate hook and that's all i think we can log in register fetch our posts we can add new one we can update and delete if we are the owner of the post we can log out we can fetch data according to category and that's all i think if i forget something please let me know in the comments and don't forget that i just prepared those applications in just a couple hours so i'm not providing you any complete application i'm giving you only the tutorial so if there is any error don't worry don't get crazy just share in our discord or facebook groups in my social media accounts and it's a good challenge for you to debug all those bugs and you can add new features for example we can upload file here but when we register we cannot upload any image we cannot see our image here what you can do you can create here new file new upload file and you can export this and when you register you can do exactly the same thing you can add any image and what else you can maybe add different categories you can create here different table and as we did here for the user you can say category id and you can separate your categories and your posts and there are many things to enhance for example we don't have any update user page we didn't create any CRUD operations we can only log in and register but we cannot delete or update our users you can do exactly the same thing for users seriously there is nothing different just try to handle that and share with us in our social media groups and that's all i hope you liked it if you learned something new today please like the video you can support Lama Dev by joining the channel or using the link in the description below. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.